I'd like to quote a bit from uh, Dr. Karanja. Uh, I want us to be very ethical and uh, I'm going to give time. Give time. I will spend like 10 minutes of my time. Now, um, and also before I came here, I think I met our uh, former dean, Dr. Uh, Professor one time, and uh, she was actually introducing me to a lot of our daughters. She, she's produced a lot of daughters and sons in pharmacy, and I was wondering whether she ever learned anything about family planning. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, it's okay. Let's be, let me be, the, the, be serious. Now, um, actually, much of what I'm presenting, part of it has already been addressed by my son, Dr. Kwanza, in terms of uh, our role in public health. And also, Evelyn presented almost 6% of it by Dr. Kathari, who you could see was very passionate uh, about MTM. But again, I'm not going to talk in detail about MTM per se, because it's quite very involving. But my topic today, is a uh, pharmacy care, I mean, a uh, pharmacy care center as a model practice for primary care pharmacists. Obviously, the term pharmacy care center is new for some of us, and also to think as a primary care pharmacist or provider is something kind of uh, new, but again, it's not quite new as, as you later on uh, realize. But I have the next moment to, am I able to move this? Uh, let me just quickly go. Now, my objectives, because uh, I kind of designed everything for a 10 minutes presentation, I'm going to briefly, again, it's just a reiteration of uh, what Dr. Kwanza had said, describe the extent of drug related problems. And the other reason why I would do that is that um, we have a moral obligation to address those problems. And that's why I'm going to make a reference to it. And then, obviously, I'm going to address as to the different approaches to reducing uh, drug related mobility and mortality, meaning the death resulting from, from drugs and, of course, injuries. That's what mobility and mortality refer to. Then, of course, the justification is why we need uh, medication therapy managers, which was earlier presented, but I got that again. Then we would like to relate the pharmaceutical care as a primary health care. I'll try and show the relationship between pharmaceutical care and MTM. Then, I'll, of course, I'll briefly talk about the training needs. Obviously, with these new challenges, definitely our training needs has to change, our curricula has to change. Then, I'll, I'll quickly propose the pharmacy practice model, and hopefully, I'll, create, I will, I'll conclude at that point. So, if I may move the next one. Now, again, um, I've probably have presented this before. Actually, statistics in the US or North America have shown that in fact hospitalization, the chances of being hospitalized as a result or secondary to ADR, adverse drug reactions, is actually 10 times more than having a motor vehicle accident, the MBA. And then there are actually 10, 100,000 deaths that result from ADRs per year, making, making it actually the fourth leading cause of death as son. There is a very beautiful uh, video here, which I, we won't watch right now. This, is very, this was actually presented by an MD about uh, that we are killing our people with drugs. So it's a very big issue. So definitely without the deliberate point, um, this, this actually costs money. These deaths don't carry by, or these injuries do not, they cost money to the taxpayer. You can actually see, sorry, uh, I have to reverse this. Oh, sorry. Now, this actually cost, it's, a, it's 177 billion dollars for America care. Again, say for example, in an appropriate use of, say for example, an inhaler, an asthmatic inhaler, you land in a hospital or an ICU, that costs money. Uh, you can actually see it's 20 billion, but the total bill, this is through Institute of Medicine who actually reported this. You can see it's a total of over 200 billion dollars in medical costs. Uh, this is actually, unfortunately, this is more than a, the cost of drugs. Think about that. We spend more treating 
issues related to the drugs than actually the actual cost of the drugs, which is, uh, which is really quite interesting. Now, um, now, sorry, um, sorry, sorry about that. Now, the approaches, again, this is a summary. There are three levels of approaches, uh, the three levels in which you can actually uh, address the, the, uh, the uh, we can reduce the drug level of mortality. As you can see, um, at the very top, there's a system that is actually informed by the policy makers, the system that is set in place. Obviously, by going doing this through the healthcare policy, I mean, I look up to for four, all those are important. But again, these systems uh, have been set because of the needs of society. And then obviously, these are kind of translated to institutionals, the hospitals, the pharmacies, and so forth. But what is more important, pardon me for my, my presentation, is actually at the patient level, at the clinical level. Clinical, clinical actually means bedside. And again, at the practical level, it really means mudu ko mudu. In other words, you're actually talking to the patient directly, not indirectly. So this is where we come in. And as you can see later, I will talk about how the concept of pharmaceutical care was actually conceived. So if I may go to the next slide. Now, when we talk about pharmaceutical care, well, you heard that Dr. Rashid Aman referring to it. Actually, simply put, it's a patient centered practice in which the practitioner takes responsibility for the patient's drug-laden needs. And this drug-laden needs actually means that what you're providing to the patient is the most appropriate, it's the most effective, it's the same as possible, and the patient is able and willing to comply. There are four drug-laden needs, and again, each one of them are related to problems. The drug, the Drug may be inappropriate or appropriate but ineffective, maybe appropriate and effective but it's not safe. It may be appropriate, effective, and safe, but the patient is not compliant. Again, this is this is a subject for another day, but you can actually see this, I can proudly say, again I'm not doing one traffic. The people who said this were my professors, the professor Linda Strand and uh, and Spoiler, who were also professors for my son, Dr. Quancy. They were, actually, and still, they are very strong. The time I went there, I said, four by 12, they were number one in the States. They are now number two in Brazil, so on. So they, and they are really fo focused. If you look at their curriculum, they are in the forefront of, of promoting pharmaceutical care. Now, let me um, go to the next slide. Sorry. Uh, Am I going back or? Sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, now, this is a truly a summary of, uh, of uh, the key element of pharmaceutical care. You can see when we talk about the needs in society, remember, you, we as pharmacists, we have to have a practice philosophy, and our practice philosophy is pharmaceutical care. We're there because of a moral obligation to address those drug related needs which actually improve uh, patient outcomes. So you can actually see here, because of uh, evidence to show that they are drug related to morbidity and mortality, and this is where, in fact, sometimes I don't understand the policy makers. When people die from uh, drug related causes, they, have, they, have, uh, they end up in the morgue, they are they're suffering, they cause accidents, there's so many things. We, we, as public health, in public health, we keep talking about managing malaria, having a HIV, you saw that, but nobody is actually talking about heterogenic, the doctor induced or drug induced diseases. There are many. I have a book that is this big, about 600 pages, but we haven't really, really addressed it. So, really, with this, it reads that we have, as practitioners, a responsibility to identify, resolve, and prevent drug therapy problems. And again, I will quickly, I will quickly summarize the responsibilities. But after the responsibilities, obviously, for us to address it, at the bottom of the pyramid, you saw the patient. This is, you, everything you do be, should be actually patient-centered. This one, if it's going to be patient-centered, there's a moral responsibility. That's a caring paradigm as such. 
and that is why it's called pharmaceutical care. What we've been doing, all the distribution functions were more transactional. And that's what uh, the professor was referring to as rather than relational. So here, we should have a caring paradigm, and that's why I was talking about the pharmaceutical care, uh, pharmacy centers, se pharmacy care centers. The care has to, be, to come in. Otherwise, people would take a pharmacy as that uh, institution that just distributes drugs. Let me quickly go to the next one. Uh, what am I going on? I'm sorry. He's eating into my time here. Now, I said I was going to show you the relation between MTM and pharmaceutical care. Pharmaceutical care is both a philosophy and a practice, but MTM is actually a methodology of delivering pharmaceutical care. And by definition, it's a collaborative effort between a pharmacist and a patient to promote safe and effective medication use and help the patient achieve optimal outcome from their medication therapy. So what you're doing is you're allowed to collaborate with the physicians. Your physician is not your master. Or he's not going to be ordering it. You are actually collaborating with him. You will need information from each other as much as you need information from them. So this is, this is a collaborative model rather than the traditional where you keep running up and down and filling in. Of course, you still need to fill prescriptions. But truly, in thinking once for the software wise, you should be seeing them as your partners. You are caring, you're actually optimizing that drug therapy. Yes, they can prescribe, and, but then, yes, the pharmacist has to take care of the drug therapy. Let me, let me summarize here so that I don't become unethical. Let me see. <laughs> now, <laughs> so, the, um, the patient care process. I'm not sure we, you remember Dr. Cazella said MTM service can take time. Normally at my clinic, I see, I mean, I mean it takes me like between one hour to two hours to see a patient. So you can actually see that this was just a, a, a I, took, I took this from one of the lectures. Uh, you can actually see here, you have to look at the patient chart, record the patient, schedule them, then you do a workup, a compression medication therapy review, after that, you, you actually assess, you actually assess if all the drug labels, four drug labels have been met, if they are not met, then there are problems. We call them drug type problems. And then you come up with a care plan to resolve the problem. Then here, uh, once you do that, then you actually do a map, a medication action map. This is the prescription from, from your clinician. This is the action to take to make sure that the therapy is both safe and effective. Then after that, you actually schedule an appointment for a follow-up. And then, of course, you do a follow it, it has to complete. If the patient is not stable at this point, you go back to square one again. So it's you have to complete the, the loop. Let me quickly finish this. Now, when it comes, the reason why, and this is why I'm, I'm, I'm summing up, you have to, pharmaceutical care, by definition, is actually a generalist practice, in the sense that if you cannot stand there and say, I'm actually special in cardiovascular medicine alone, or I'm an asthma specialist, because these patients, they come in with uh, hypertension, they come in with arthritis, and they're all on medication. You're not going to just isolate. So you have generally approved through all of them. And that's why, by nature, an MTM is not practiced in ambulatory care alone. You can be in ICU, whatever somebody's taking any medication. Anybody taking medication, you need to be there. And even those who are not taking medication, probably should be taking medication. It's still a problem. So here, I'm not going to get to the course of time. You can see here, for a general practice, you truly have to have these 10 characteristics. This was actually um, quoted from the European Academy of Teaching General Practice. You, for, for you to, pra to practice so as a general practitioner, the patient, you should be the first contact, which we have done pretty well. The patient come to us for self-care. Coordinating with other professionals, we do very poorly. Patient-centered, we are not. Uh, we normally, people come for preterm, we just help preterm without not talking to them, so we are not patient-centered. So again, longitudinal, I'm not going to go to all these details, but all the same is that where I did this, some areas actually were doing uh, a zero, if I may use the term. This is, this is, these are the elements that are important for general practice. Uh, Okay, 
I wanted two slides and I'm done. Reasons why from single case in general practice, uh, of course I've already said, patients have several comorbidities, you can't address just one, and yours, you're going to address all the patient value they need, so you don't want to isolate. So, and again, uh, it's important when we develop a process, process that means a systematic approach to solving the problem, identifying, resolving, and preventing. So whether you are, you are a specialist, a pharmacotherapist, when you really need to share with the other generalists. The complexity of drug therapy will determine whether it is something that has to be, like if it was therapeutic drug monitoring, whether it should come to me at that point. And again, you will have to be addressing all these four uh, drug related needs. That, those, those are one at the bottom. So finally, uh, where is it now? This is, uh, yeah, as a primary care, from single care actually, as a primary care, and this is where I'm trying to introduce. Uh, pharmacists, you remember we are talking about university health coverage. The patients come to us for self-care. Self-care industry actually is, is a very big junk um, in terms of when it comes to buying medications. So really, and people come with us, some of the acute care, they don't know, they don't know what they are medical doctor. They will come in and tell you about this problem. So it's for you to decide whether it's that you can manage the problem at that point. So in other words, we have to train our pharmacists as primary health care we should respond to their needs. So, and therefore, uh, finally, is that there should be an emphasis for, like in the amputated care, there should be documentation, prevention, which includes education, health, health promotion, intervention, should be continuous, systematic, integration, all this. All these elements must be there. So, finally, finally, uh, where are you? Why is it not? Now, these are the services. This is my final slide. These are a summary. Some of this you can actually access on APHA, American Pharmacy Association, and under MTM Central, you can actually see this. The, the service you can see, you can do medication therapy review. From a therapy consult, if somebody came in and is having a problem with the specific issues, you can also do disease state management as a coach. People may have other issues with their asthma or hypertension. Pharmacogenomics, which is already my area of interest. In other words, how can we use the genetics to, to inform us in terms of drug therapy? This anticoagulant uh, management tool, other clinical services, medication safety surveillance, I think we're already kind of doing that. There's wellness, public health, and immunizations. So lastly, as an example, can you go to that? As an example, I've already set up a, a clinic it's actually under the name of True Pharmacare. Uh, you can go to the website, and my logo is what my motto is Advancing Personal Medication Therapy. Um, again, I'm going to go through all this. You can actually see access this website. And uh, so I think we can continue with these conversations. I guess that's all I have for you today. And thank you very much for your time.